Well, good afternoon. <laughs> Welcome to the second talk of our international lecture series. Before I introduce today's speaker, I want to talk about some of uh, the exciting things going on at the Santa Fe Council and international relations. First, my name is Sandy Campbell. I'm the uh, new executive director. I've been on the job since about June of this year. It's been an excellent adventure so far. Um, I've met many of you sitting here in this room today. Um, I traveled all over town to see and, and understand uh, the Santa Fe community. And it's such an exceptional community. I, I had no idea how intellectually robust uh, this community is and filled with so many people wanting to engage on, on complexity, ultimately, on, on the great complexity that marks our times. Now, as many of you know, a few weeks ago, CIR changed its mission statement. This is a momentous occasion for any nonprofit, and we'll be issuing our, our updated strategic plan by the end of the month. But our mission now is to connect New Mexico and the world by engaging and educating people to become or to be responsible global citizens. The new mission statement is really only different through the last five words, to be global citizens, to be responsible global citizens. So what do we mean by the term global citizen? It's a very good question. Um, this is a new term, and with its newness, there's some very useful ambiguity. There's some definitional space for us to move in and to lead in. And I think there's an awful lot of opportunity. And I think it puts CIR, most importantly, in front of a big and very imminent wave. Because at root, we all recognize in this room that we need some new solutions to some of the big global problems that we're facing. Nation states have taken us this far. But we're looking at a world where we need some new dialogue. We need some new opportunities, new channels for that dialogue. And ultimately, some new actors to help address some of the inherently global problems we have. And secondly, we recognize that we are, all of us, already global citizens. And we will only become more and more globalized beings in both the short and the long term. And of course, when we think of our children, the world that they will inhabit uh, is going to be intensely global. So while many talk about the rights uh, we as citizens of a nation state enjoy, the right to vote, to move, to move freely, to work, I find the global citizen's emphasis on our responsibilities to each other and to the planet to open up some very useful conceptual territory. Because when we think about our responsibilities as global citizens, we have a new way of approaching the global commons, the oceans, the climate, air, space. We understand that we need to know as much as we can about the commons and that we need to stand together as individuals, as nations, and as a unified planet for the very health of those commons. For me, the term global citizen is not about world government. It's not about a strengthened or highly competent United Nations. Those ideas are well down the road if they take shape at all. I worked within the UN system for almost a decade, and uh, I saw some tricky things there. And, and I think that, in fact, we may need this nation state model to govern smaller populations than larger. But really, rather than looking at governance implications, for me, global citizen identifies a layer that we all bear, an intensely modern layer that reflects how interconnected and interdependent we as a human species now are, no matter where we live and no matter our national citizenship. We're all members of a global economy, of a globalizing workforce, and of globalizing societies. And we all use this miraculous thing called the internet, which really only has one border, that of access. Facebook doesn't really care what country you live in or, or where you are. So long as you have a dice, sorry, so long as you have a device and a data connection, you're in. You're included. You're part of the group. Global citizens understand their own culture, and they have empathy and understanding for other cultures. Global citizens know that we must continually build a world of gender equality, of peaceful conflict resolution, of human rights, of sustainable economic growth, of religious and cultural pluralism, of no poverty, and of environmental stewardship. These, in other words, are our rights as global citizens. These are our expectations, these are our ideals, and these are our demands. And the more we press for these rights, the better and more active a national citizen we can be. I see global citizen and a national citizen as being completely reinforcing layers. The more we recognize and feed the global citizen layer that we have within, the better and more enlightened a national citizen we become. It gives us new criteria, a new standard, and a strong reminder of the world we very much still need to build. Secondly, and just as importantly, 
A global citizen believes that a core responsibility we have to each other that we must protect and promote within all human communities is equality. Global citizens believe that no matter where we're born, no matter our sex, our race, no matter our sexual orientation, no matter the God we do or do not worship, that we are all entitled to the same opportunities in life. Opportunities to health, to education, to food, to security, and so on. This is a core belief of the global citizen, that we are all human and thus all entitled to the same sets of opportunities, period. Whether we're born in the slums of Nairobi, in the Chinese countryside, or in the high desert of New Mexico. This is a big one. This is a big belief, this equality of opportunity. But it's also a simple belief. It's a straightforward belief. And what a world this can actually be when we use this to help us make our decisions. So we created our new Global Citizen Passport program to impart these values, these lessons, these case studies to high school students. And we're not just doing it for fun or to learn, although those are important things. But we're doing this because we, global citizens, must find new ways of action to help bring about the world we know we can collectively create. Knowledge is absolutely essential, but it's insufficient when it fails to lead to informed action and informed change. I and others will be offering uh, CIR talks in the near future on the global citizen, on the global commons, and on the fascinating and complex aspects of globalization that affect each and every one of us. I really want to talk about the global currents that shape our lives in this strange yet wonderful time. I want to talk about offshore banking, about global production chains, about Ed Snowden and Julian Assange, about 21st century espionage and cybersecurity, about the uncomfortable paradoxes in the international development sector, about corporate social responsibility and the implications of ever-expanding corporate governance. I want, above all, for CIR to remain as thought leaders at the forefront of Santa Fe's brilliant intellectual life. So we have a lot more information about our emerging global citizen programming available in the foyer at the front. And I encourage you all to participate in it. Come and meet some of the high school students. Tell them about your experience of becoming a global citizen. Support them with your stories, your experience, and support them with your dollars. We have a scholarship program for the Global Citizen Passport Program. In a week, we've raised over $1,000 to ensure we can help bring students from a, a, a lower socioeconomic background to the program. But we need more help with this. We need your help with this. I'm incredibly excited about the future, um, and, I, and I hope you are too. I welcome you all to it. On that note. <laughs>